to get started. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone. Good afternoon. My name's Lexi Garcia. I'm an organizer with Texas Rising. Um, and um, we're here in uh, coalition with Recall CPS, CASA, SWU, Sierra Club, Public Citizen. Um, and today we're here because each of us owns a part of CPS Energy. However, um, as residential community ratepayers, we are being used to subsidize the rates of the city's biggest polluters. Um, all the while, our families, uh, neighbors, and the working poor of San Antonio um, are faced with the threat of disconnections for non-payment and a rate increase. Tens of thousands of families face disconnection, many of whom have already faced the worst of um, the impacts of COVID-19, the winter storm, and an economy that functions on exploiting us. So we're here on the steps of um, this new multi-million uh, dollar CPS energy headquarters, while, um, which was brightly lit and heated during the winter storm, while 300,000 of us sat in the cold and dark in our homes to demand an actual say in our rates um, and um, continue the moratorium on disconnections indefinitely because it's time that our utility provided something other than human suffering and empty promises. Heat and light are human rights and we demand no disconnections and no rate increases because not a single one of us should bear the financial or human costs of CPS Energy's adject failure to listen to the community that continues to show up and speak out for these things. So we were very proud to help um, collect signatures alongside everyone to reclaim CPS Energy. Um, and what we're gonna do today is um, ahead of the um, Board of Trustees meeting at one o'clock where most of us will speak, we're gonna do a, um, uh, we're gonna hit this pinata of the dirty spruce coal plant that they refuse to set a end date to and then we're going to go inside and speak to the board of trustees and we'll also have we'll see a banner drop leading from um or right over that sky wave um but before we um move on to that i guess we should hit the pinata, yes, hit the pinata. yeah let's show cps yeah. that they should yeah. they should yeah. shut down the coal plant can i have the honors yes <laughs> Bring it, hey Molly. Are we gonna use this? Stick down here. Okay, ready? You gonna take turns, alright? Take turns. Ready? Ready? Go ahead. Yeah! Woo! Get it! No dirty energy! Yeah! Come on! Get it, girl! Cold kill! Hit it, girl! Hit it, girl! <laughs> <I do. laughs> All right. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, baby. 
That's the power of the people. We're gonna shut down Spruce. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. All right, um, and now we're gonna hear from our speakers. Our first one up is going to be Darby Riley. He's a Sierra Club member, attorney, and he wrote the recall CPS energy petition. Um, and he will be giving us an update on a lawsuit and a lot of other things. Here you go. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm sure you all remember this uh, petition we did and yeah. 14,000 signatures that we got for this petition uh, back Daddy, get on your mic. October, November. And, uh, you know, the 2020s, we have to reduce emissions by 45% this decade. That's what the scientists tell us. And, and CPS is the key to that for our community. And the recall CPS petition uh, it would have protected low-income citizens from unaffordable rates and disconnections, would have closed, closed the coal plants by 2030, increased the efficiency, and changed the board structure to city council control of policy. After we got those signatures, CPS Energy Management got scared, and they went out and uh, filed a lawsuit in Travis County without notice to anybody. Uh, and basically attained a judgment in December with, and nobody knew they were even in this court. And the judgment stated that this uh, petition could not go forward because it uh, might affect the bonds of CPS. Well, this was an illegal matter, but of course they had no opposition. The court granted the judgment. We're now on appeal. We're on appeal to the third court of appeals in Austin. And we're very confident that the court's going to follow Texas law which says that you can't stop a charter petition in the middle of it. You have to wait until after it has passed the voters, and then you can challenge it in court. We believe that had they followed the proper procedure, this, this petition would have passed and would have made uh, our uh, CPS under the control of the public for the first time. So we're going, uh, should be in the next six months, we'll have a result out of Austin, and, and we hope to uh, be able to revive our right to challenge CPS uh, with a charter amendment petition by the next available day, which is 2023. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Darby, for that update. Um, next, I'll move us through to our next speaker, who is Erica Alvarado. Um, she will be speaking about the um, evictions that the looming eviction crisis and how CPS lacks inadequacy as far as uh, consumer protection. Hi, my name is Erica. I'm with the tenant union of San Antonio. I use she, her pronouns. I just wanted to speak a little bit because uh, CPS is going to start trying to do uh, disconnections again. And this is a tenant's right issue because yeah. there's many, many leases have clauses that you have to keep continuous power or you face eviction. Uh, evicting people is wrong at, at any point, but it's especially wrong during a global pandemic. We have to continue to push back and make sure that CPS hears us and does not continue with this connection. We cannot separate families. We cannot risk kids going into foster care. We cannot risk eviction. So our struggles are, are interconnected and we have to remember that to fight together. Um, solidarity forever beyond hashtag thank you for listening. Thank you, Erica. Um, next, we'll hear from Molly. She's a community advocate. Um, so I just wanted to write a couple of things to CPS. My name is Molly. I'm a very, very concerned citizen. I understand that CPS will be executing many disconnects on people affected by COVID and winter storms complications and other financial strife. I've seen, I bear witness to where landlords use utility shutoffs as an intimidation tactic to get a renter to vacate a dwelling despite the CDC moratorium protections. So my question to CPS is, is CPS helping the Texas Apartment Association and other landlords intimidate the renters with this massive utility shutoff disconnect? Is that what they're doing? Also, if CPS disconnects these households, many people will be facing homelessness because San Antonio Housing Authority doesn't help people if an apartment has no electricity. They will be responsible 
CPS who will be responsible for the many voucher termination processes of hundreds of poor people who have no other means to house them. Lastly, if CPS proceeds with this mass disconnect, they will be responsible for the many people who need electricity to run their medical devices. People will die if they don't have working oxygen ventilators and other type medical devices. Their blood will be on the hands of CPS. So I beg, please do not disconnect these households. Work with the city programs as they seek assistance and are being approved left and right of rental and utility assistance. So thank you. I'm a Bear County resident. I'm very concerned to me. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Yeah, the average amount, the average bill that is right now, um, people are out delinquent is around $600. And a lot of people will be losing power um, with such a high bill to be paid. So um, next uh, speaker that we have is Anakwa Garcia. Um, she is a, an organizer with uh, Southwest Workers Union. Thank you, hi everyone. Um, my name is Anakwa Garcia, and I am a CTES Energy resident for Ray Fair. Like I said, like I said, I also work for Southwest Workers Union, and I am also a member of the Climate Action and Adaptation Plan's Equity Working Group. I am here with community to say that CTES Energy basks in and promotes inequity. This is in disaccordance with the Climate Action Plan that CTES both authored and funded. CPS is already talking about bringing back the legacy of disconnections, as well as increasing rates. And let me just repeat this as it's been repeated earlier, we own CPS. That's right. Public ownership right. should mean that we are protected from predatory business models like disconnections and charging residential rate payers a $350 service fee just to start service if you cannot prove that you've had excellent utility payments. CPS wants us to pay up, but they themselves won't pay up. In fact, they're in court right now arguing that they are not liable for the debt and billions of dollars lost during the winter storm, calling it an act of God. CPS owes, CPS owes and yet they want all that debt forgiven, but we, we have to pay up. How about that? Board of Trustee Ed Kelly said that it's time San Antonio Residential community rate payers figure it out on their own, adding that he and his privileged white family figured it out all on their own, and that it's time that we do the same. These are the words of a man that doesn't fear accountability, because there is no accountability at CPS. Board of Trustee members are unelected and therefore have no true constituents other than those who put them in their, who put them in their place. Instead, we have to look to City Council to hold these trustee members accountable. The recall CPS petition, which gained more than 14,000 signatures, was filled in court. Those at the top have made it so that the public, which owns CPS, can no longer petition to make CPS better for everyone and for the environment. And as for the environment, the legacy of disconnections has to go. Bruce Cole plans has got to go. Board member Ed Kelly has got to go, and we are here to see this through. If anybody is needing help with their and paying down their energy bill, Southwest Workers Union is giving prepaid cards to go towards bills. For more information, please go to swunion.com forward slash community fund. Thank you for your time. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Ed, Ed Kelly's got, got to go. go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Ed, Ed Kelly's got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Ed Kelly's got to go. Hey, hey. Wow, he really does. Okay. Um, now we'll hold some time for anyone who was not, who has not spoken, who Can wants do to. do What's up? Rafael Garcia. Oh. I was going to hold oh, okay. for um, if anyone okay. who wants to speak um, that wasn't on the program but has some words for uh, the Board of Trustees and didn't wasn't able to um, sign up to speak. Um, How about Rafi? Yeah, just wanted to see if okay. anyone was here that wanted to speak. Okay. I don't know. Okay. He can't be here. He's in bed. Yeah. He can't okay. Be yeah. um, with no one. Uh, oh, yeah. With no one wanting to speak, we'll now move to. Um, 
quick? Can I introduce him real sure. quick? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. I wanted to uh, make space for uh, someone who can literally cannot be here today, who is uh, homebound, who is reliant upon at least five medical devices for their life every day, and uh, has lost power. He told me two days ago, four times in the last four years. This storm is just one of them. Disconnections for non-payment uh, is, is a whole other is a whole other monster, and he's lucky to be alive to have lived through those. So Raphael has uh, spinal muscular atrophy uh, and, uh, and went through this last storm. His mother going through the uh, 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 chemotherapy, sleeping on the floor beside him uh, with, the, with the lights knocked out for over two days. And I wanted to make room. It's a four or five minute interview. Uh, so I hope, I, I hope everybody can be patient and take the time. He wanted to be here. He wants to be here. He wants to come to confront CPS directly. And he's, and he's not able to. He's immunocompromised. And one of the messages I think that's important is that people say just call, call 911 or go to the hospital. And for him, that's not an option. You know, he needs to be segregated, he needs to get home, and he needs to have a critical care program that actually keeps him safe and keeps the lights on. Right now, CPS's critical care program is only a payment plan pro program. It does nothing to prioritize the uh, reliability of electricity to people whose lives depend on it uh, day to day. So we're going to try to uh, play his message to uh, this speaker into this mic and out to that speaker. So um, if you guys will just imagine that he's with us today, we very much want it to be. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rafael Garcia. I am a disability rights advocate, and I live in Santa Texas. An average man can dress himself in you know, feed himself, and, you know, I can't. Um, you know, I have to rely on uh, people and machines to help me. I use uh, multiple machines, oxygen, uh, ventilators, at, at, you know, at night and during the day, uh, you know, to rest my lungs because I'm so uh, vulnerable to infection. Like the cough assist machine. Uh, a cough assist machine activates the uh, diaphragm muscles to be able to clear my airways from any mucus that might build up. Um, you know, I use nebulizer treatments, um, you know, uh, that's to keep my lungs uh, cleared as best as possible. Um, you know, and I use that every four hours, um, you know, night and day. So, you know, that's a, a struggle uh, in itself, you know. Of course, these machines, um, you know, I, I would say in total, I would say I have about eight machines. Uh, eight machines just kind of keep me, uh, you know, stable and alive every day. I need power. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I just I need to stay alive. And you know, I'm not the only one. There's many people like me. Um, when it comes to a situation like myself, you know, my power has been cut off, not one, not two, not three, but I would say maybe four, four times out of the last four years. So that's one day out of the year where, you know, it's terrifying because it's, you know, it goes out and you're not sure when it's going to come back on. And, you know, that's not, that's the five thousand on the critical care program, you know? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I'm on the critical care program, and, you know, the disconnections still happen. It's terrifying. It goes from one minute you're on a bed, and imagine air is being pumped into you, you're calm as can be, and then at the snap, it just shuts off. And then everything shuts off. And you're struggling to breathe. You feel like the wind got knocked out of you. And the first thought, of course, is let me sit up and let me gather myself. And after that is, oh crap, how am I going to survive? You know, at the critical care program first, 
and foremost, should always be about reassurance. And not just reassurance for your business, but reassurance for your community. It should have working people that actually reach out to people of the disabled community and say, hey, if you're disabled, let's check it out. Let's take you on this program. That's step one. Step two, the program should be <coughs> complying with your doctors as well and medical staff to be able to make sure that your machines and equipment are running safe. They should also work with local vendors, uh, medical vendors, to make sure that if storms are approaching and so forth, that you have the stability and the the equipment that you need to keep yourself alive. For instance, we hit a winter storm. We knew it was coming. We knew the things that were going to happen. But at the same time, we failed to prepare. And we failed to reach out to our community. That's making sure that we have enough funds to get people back of generators and to make sure that they're able to sustain their equipment throughout the times. If not, you know, work with local law enforcement to go door to door and give them supplies that, and give them equipment. And, you know, also work with medical vendors to get them the respiratory equipment, you know, the diabetic equipment, you know, so forth, you know, to be able to help them sustain the care. But if a heat wave comes, you know, call them, reach out, you know, and it's really a simple the phone call. Reach out to them, make sure that, you know, your patients are doing well, <laughs> make sure that, you know, that they need anything, you know, um, it, it's about working together. Thank you, Ralph. Um, I wish that he could also be here today. And clearly the choices that CPS makes and continues not to make are uh, costing and um, harming real lives every single day. Now um, we'll move into our banner drop. I believe, yes. It's been a little while. Okay. Good, good. Stop the rate hike! Stop the rate hike! Stop the rate hike! Stop the rate hike!